Hey guys, it's Jacob from Living Healthy Every Day. I'm just sitting in my back office right now, and I want to talk to you about spirulina. You know that blue-green algae that everyone's eating that craze? I want to give you an unbiased opinion on spirulina. So, it's pretty popular right now, and most people are taking the wrong brands of spirulina. There are toxins and neurotoxins in spirulina that can be uh, very detrimental to your health. Um, so that's why you have to get it from a quality source, and I'll put that in the description below. But let's first talk about the benefits, and then we can talk a little bit about the mechanism of action and how it works. Right, let's start with the mechanism of action, and then the benefits, and then I'll show you where you can get spirulina. So it works. This powerful anti-cancer, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory uh, bone density healer is packed with tons of vitamins, uh, tons of minerals, tons of nutrients, um, but its main effects work through its ability to inhibit uh, inflammation and act as a powerful antioxidant. So two ways that it inhibits or is an antioxidant is it reduce, uh, increases SOD, uh, superoxide dimutase, which helps with free radicals in the cell. So essentially balancing your cell's redox potential, able to uh, hold on to electrons and things like that. Uh, it works on that and then it also restores your abilities, abil your body's ability to uh, produce glutathione, which is your body's major antioxidant, very powerful antioxidant too. And so it works as a very powerful antioxidant. It works as a very powerful anti-inflammatory since it can boost the immune system. So in acute doses, it works by boosting your uh, Th1 response. And if you take it chronically, it works more as an anti-inflammatory uh, boosting the Th2 response of your immune system. So now that we've got that covered, let's go through the 18 benefits, 18 plus benefits of spirulina. So as we discussed before, it's got powerful antioxidant properties. So it can help regulate the cell's homeostasis because it can help with the uh, electron chain transport and keeping the cell working. And with glutathione, we talked about glutathione. Um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, nutrients and uh, benefit of spirulina. So it's got a full amino acid profile. It's about 16% uh, and it's got slightly lower levels of methionine, cysteine, and lysine uh, in it. About 100 grams of spirulina is about 290 calories. Um, it's got that 100 grams of spirulina, spirulina has got about 207% uh, of thiamine, 306% uh, of your daily value of riboflavin, 219% of iron, and 90% uh, of manganese. And many people think that it has B12 in it. Uh, it has like a pseudo vitamin version of B12, which has other benefits uh, other than B12. Um, it's really neat that it's eco-friendly. Um, and it can help with reducing CO2 emissions and things like that. Uh, it can contribute to algal over uh, algal blooms and overgrowth from uh, from excess nitrogen that's seen in uh, uh, runoff and things like that. Um, it's used in things like uh, food, of course, um, but you can also see it in like corn chips, uh, snacks, cereals, baby foods, ice cream biscuits, juices, pastas, yogurts, milk. And uh, apart from being a food and a supplement, it's using cosmetics as like a food dye. Uh, it can be seen in animal feed. Uh, it can be used as fertilizer, pharmaceuticals. Um, you can even use it as biogas. Uh, extractions of it can be used as biogas, so an alternative fuel source. Um, so let's go back to its uh, antioxidant. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's able to inhibit uh, inflammatory pathways such as uh, NF kappa beta, um, which is a pro inflammatory uh, cytokine producing pathway, it can inhibit interleukin 1 beta and TNF alpha. Uh, it's able to uh, increase histone uh, acetylation, which is pretty awesome. So it allows the 
uh, transcription of genes to continue. Um, it can help with uh, arthritis, so osteoarthritis, rheumatoid uh, arthritis. Uh, it can help with allergies such as uh, like allergic rhinitis um, by inhibiting interleukin-4. Uh, so it boosts the immune system. It can uh, improve the gut. So it can promote the growth of certain strains of bacteria acting kind of like a pro prebiotic. Um, so it helps with bifobacterium strains, uh, lactobacillus acidophilus, lactobacillus bulgaricus, uh, casei, lactis, streptococcus, thermophilus. Uh, so it's, it's a prebiotic for your gut. Uh, although it can lower uh, bifidobacterium anomalous and increase clostridium irregulare, so that's one downside of it, uh, how it alters your gut. But it's also a powerful uh, antimicrobial and fights against pathogens. So it can kill a, uh, a bunch of, if, if you go onto the blog, you can see everything that I'm talking about in, in depth and broken down into all the pathways and everything like that. Uh, I'm just going over a brief version of all this. And that link is in the description below. Uh, I can also comment if you, uh, reply in a comment if you, you comment for the link, I can send it to you there. Um, it can help. Break. So some of the common uh, pathogens that it can help against is like Candida, um, Salmonella, uh, E. coli. It can also help th break down uh, biofilm. So biofilm surrounds the bacteria, allows them to, to stay alive in your gut even if you're tr trying to take an antibiotic. Um, and it has antiviral effects um, against uh, Coxsackie virus, uh, adenovirus, uh, HSV-1 and HSV-2, um, and a few others. It can protect the lungs, uh, so it helped against oxidative stress in patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Uh, it can help with weight loss. Uh, they're actually looking into it as using it as a uh, anti-obesity drug. Um, so intake of 2.8 grams of spirulina three times a day was able to help with significant body weight reduction. Uh, it can uh, reduce serum leptin levels in mice, which leptin, uh, high levels of leptin can insula uh, indicate leptin resistance, which is a common problem with obese patients. Uh, spirulina can protect the liver. Uh, it can help against uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It can lower LDL levels, uh, AST levels, ALT levels. Um, it can also restore glutathione levels in the liver. Um, helps with inflammation in the liver and uh, can help with uh, lipid uh, peroxidization. Uh, essentially lowering uh, tumor growth factor beta 1 and hepatocyte growth factor. Uh, it can help the heart and the vascular system. It's antihypertensive, so it can lower systolic and diastolic blood pressure in rats. Uh, it's been shown to uh, also restore and stabilize human serum albumin levels. Uh, it mitigates the effects of certain toxins, so like certain heavy metals, such as arsenic, mercury, uh, chromium, cadmium, fluoride, insecticides, uh, a bunch of antibiotics, and a bunch of chemotherapy drugs, uh, mainly because it's a very protective uh, and strong antioxidant. has anti-cancer properties, which is cool. It stops part of the cell cycle, um, so it doesn't allow it to keep progressing. It also upregulates a bunch of genetic pathways. One of them is P53 uh, and helping produce cell apoptosis or program cell death in preventing cancer. So it's a it's an anti-tumor, anti-cancer. It's neuroprotective, so it can increase spirulina, actually a compound in spirulina, uh, can increase brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which helps with neurogenesis. Um, and some have compared it to N-acetylcysteine, which is a powerful antioxidant that's a precursor to glutathione as well. Um, it can help with Parkinson's disease, restoring dopaminergic neurons in certain areas of the brain. Um, it can help with uh, tyrosine hydroxylase, which is a precursor to a coen coenzyme to create dopamine for Parkinson's patients. 
uh, it's able to upregulate the expression of T reg cells, FOXO3, which is a very important genetic pathway, and leukin 10 uh, and TGF-beta, which are anti-inflammatory cytokines. It's got anti-diabetic properties. Spirulina, of course, it's got anti-diabetic properties, uh, helps against oxidative stress in uh, hyperglycemic cells, uh, hyperglycemia effects. So when there's too much glucose, you have hyperglycemia and that's toxic to the cells. And spirulina can decrease the oxidative stress from hyperglycemia on those cells. Uh, it can protect the kidneys. Um, it can also enhance the quality of skin. So right now I'm in the sun and getting UVB, ultraviolet uh, light to my skin. And so it can inhibit, inhibit damage from UVB. So that would be good for just getting the vitamin D that you want, but not getting the oxidative stress on your skin. Uh, it can enhance wound healing in the skin uh, by enhancing collagen production. It can help with anemia. That's uh, it's high in iron and high in, high in pseudo B12. So it can increase uh, hemoglobin, hemoglobin levels uh, in the blood. It can protect the eyes. Uh, it can protect the ears. It can help with chronic pain. And it also helps with fatigue. Uh, they had participants uh, that were given spirulina and they saw their physical activity, uh, their physical performance, and their mental performance was increased four hours after supplementing with spirulina. And my personal experience with spirulina is I always get a boost of energy from taking it. So I'll take it before exercise, I actually I'll put it, the powder or the tablets uh, in coconut water and let it break down and then I'll take it right before I work out uh, increasing glucose levels if I do take spirulina and if I take it too late at night it actually gives me insomnia which is part of the common side effects but in clinical trials it's been proven to be safe in humans uh, so it's currently being tested in more human uh, clinical trials um, it can interact with certain uh, enzymes that uh, involve P450 in the liver um, so it can be immunosuppressant. These are all the downsides by the way if you haven't caught on. Um, it's got BMAA toxins which uh, Paul Allen Cox and a few other people have been researching heavily uh, on their connections to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and ALS so that's a neurotoxin there. Uh, and it's got microcystins which is also uh, bad for the liver and other organs and it's been shown that chronic exposure to that can actually cause shock or death to children so it's paramount you get it from a quality source which is in the link below in the comment section in this blog post so make sure you get it from a quality source um, because you don't want it having that you want a company that actually tests for levels of BMAA uh, and sees what toxins are in there and one other side effect and caveat I'd say is that it's got high levels of phenylalanine in it and people with a with methylation problems specifically in the SNP of uh, A1298C it can uh, expose you to high levels of uh, uh, phenylalanine in your blood which can be toxic to the brain and this is only if you have the genetic predisposition so I actually have this genetic predisposition, but I don't express uh, uh, phenylketonuria, uh, which is the disease. But I do take BH4, tetrahydrobiopterin, which you can learn more about in the description below, which helps with the production of certain, uh, it's a coenzyme, or co limiting cofactor to creating neurotransmitters, uh, apart from detoxing from ammonia and other parts in your gene, in your cells. Um, so you can get it in uh, the description below. And I, if this video was informative to you, uh, please like it and share it with your friends that you want to expose an unbiased truth about spirulina. And if you want to see more videos about breakdowns of supplements and learning about uh, how they work with your body and immune system and things like that, then subscribe and hit the little bell button on the side 
if you want to become uh, notified every time that there is a new video like this. And if you haven't already, check out the blog. Tons of posts like this on, on supplements, on drugs, on ways you can enhance your body uh, using mindset, lifestyle, supplements, enhancing neurotransmitters, increasing dopamine, things like that. So thanks guys for watching and stay beautiful.